This is Dev. Dev embarks on a podcasting journey to listen to the countless creatives, leaders, normal everyday people, and everyone in between in his life. On Dev is Alive and listening to... So, like, when did videography start for you and the whole thing? Um, really started, like, probably, like, this time last year, for real. Last year? Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Um, I had been doing photography and everything for years now, but yeah, videography had just a bigger barrier of entry to me just because, like, the editing process and everything. Yeah. But once I just decided to get over the hurdle of that, I mean, I found my way through it, for right. real. Just doing concepts video here and there like yeah. music videos it's funny because yeah. like i've always like thought you were gonna get into that lane of things just because like awesome like the the visual aspect being added to like what was already being um presented like audio wise mm -hmm. was i was like there's one there's gonna be one day when he takes everything that he's doing audio wise and yeah. apply it to visuals because like right. I don't know what it was about you and Malik, like, so young, making, like, actual, like, audio experiences. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. When, when did you start with music? Because I, I, I guess we'll, like, steadily mm -hmm. go through the process of, like, you starting here, then going there, mm -hmm. then going there. Because you've, you've grown so much in the last right, right. five years, and I've so. been having so much fun watching it. So, so. like, where, where does music start for you? Um... So I guess um, it starts with band. Yeah. So Good I was in middle school, middle school doing percussion. Mm -hmm. um, did that for three years. Yeah. Then, I mean, once I got to Hillgrove, um, once I got around y'all, you and Alex and Jordan, everything yeah, yeah. is really, really when I started to develop a taste for different types of music. And um, you know, around that time is like when we'd have. You know, before the football games or whatever, we'd be freestyling or whatever. And <laughs> yeah. I'd be the guy bringing in, like, instrumentals or, like, just playing auxiliary percussion or whatever while y'all freestyling or whatever. And that Type turned two. into, like, us making beats on the phone and then eventually, like, moving on to the laptop. Yeah. So probably, like, sophomore year of high school, freshman, sophomore year of high school is really when I started um, getting into that seriously. Yeah. Yeah. And... It almost seemed like immediate because, like, we we were obviously fucking around, right, being right, right. Like goofballs. But yeah. like, it was like right when we graduated, and you say like your sophomore year of high school, mm -hmm. really junior. All all those last three years, you started mm -hmm. like, you Jamar and Malik were starting to like craft your sound, right. which it's so funny. I I, it's so hard to just explain. Mm -hmm. what a sound is and mm -hmm. why it's exclusive to one person but when i hear your beats i know it's you. Right, right, right. like in i that's hard to accomplish like right. when did you feel like or do you even feel like you've accomplished that and that you've found your niche in music um no nah, i don't feel like i found it just yet really? i feel like i'm still searching for it okay. just because there's so many like inspirations i'm taking from especially now there's a lot of new things i'm listening to as far as like just like yeah like i like doing stuff with 808s and just different types of like bounces to it yeah. but now i'm definitely getting <clears throat> into more people like um Mike and Mavi and Navy yeah. Blue mm -hmm. with these different types of sounds and I'm starting to incorporate that into my sound too and really want to like express certain ideas through that without having to use such heavy tones for real mm -hmm. but um I feel like that's always been there that kind of sound but um yeah every day is something a new exploration in that sound yeah, yeah. which that's the beauty of music for like, sure you just for like sure. get to because, like, I was talking to um, a good friend of mine the other day, and he was like, so, like, what do you listen to nowadays? And I was like, I'm listening to Bjork for the mm -hmm. first time mm -hmm. ever. And she is incredible. Yeah. It's kind yeah. of, like, the craziest music I've ever heard. But yeah. you just know the name, and you don't, like, do the deep yeah, dive yeah, yeah, ever. Yeah. But one day I was like, fuck it, I'm going to do a deep dive. And yeah. I'm like, there's so much music for sure. that's out there that I don't even yeah. know about yet yeah. just because... Yeah, it's just so much, but like yeah, it's so oversaturated right now that you have to do your own due diligence to go out your way to really like explore it for real. Your yeah. interests, yeah. 
in that due diligence, like I guess in those formative years, like high school, college, who have you, you know, grown to like appreciate more than like others? Because I'm, I'm, mm-hmm. I know most of your top ten, but like mm-hmm. for the sake of the podcast, who mm-hmm. who are, who's Austin listening to for experience? Um, I mean just like currently right now, or like who's at the top of like all time? Yeah, all time, like, fuck it. Um, all time, I'm putting. Kanye up there. Okay. I'm putting Future up there. Type shit. I'm putting Erica Badu up there. Um, who else? I want to say like back then when I really started making beats for real, Cardi. Mm. Not really now. Um. Oh really? Yeah, not really now. Um. Yeah, I mean, this stuff is cool, but like I can't. It's not something I can consume like regularly for real, especially because there's so much other stuff that I feel like is like really like deep and like yeah. resonating with me a lot more. But um, I'm not gonna lie, like Mike's music, like just the way he approaches his craft, even now, like it has a really cinematic feel to it, yeah. and that's something an aspect I really want to incorporate into my music. Um, trying to think of who else let me just real quick yeah go for it and while you're looking i want to give you a compliment at the mm-hmm. sake of embarrassing you i think you've already achieved it <laughs> i'm not gonna lie <laughs> thank you because i think oh lucky definitely lucky. Is going oh, yeah, lucky yeah, yeah, for yeah, sure yeah. i already knew that yeah <laughs> um put down the walk lucky yeah i'm just joking but yeah my bad i didn't mean to cut you off no nah, you you're good dude it's the um the work that you and malik were doing on um the project double vision Mm -hmm. and um that first mix y'all put out i think it was right around the pandemic that y'all put it out there was one night that i got violently high (laughs) and put that on and it felt like i was floating like incredible mixing incredible Mm -hmm. use of songs and transitions Mm -hmm. and just audio that you you're grabbing from i'm assuming y'all recorded some of that and Mm -hmm. put it in yourself where what i don't even know what to ask you in relation to double vision but Mm -hmm. for the sake of the podcast what is double vision what did y'all try to accomplish there what are y'all trying to accomplish Mm -hmm. with that Mm -hmm. that mission statement for double Vision? it's definitely something we were even just talking about last night just like what is double vision and what it's growing into and what we aspire for it to be yeah but um definitely in the past it was just something just like a uh, an expression for these ideas that we wanted um like we've made audio mixes before and really the thought behind that was to put these songs on showcase that we listen to for real but something that people should be put on to and um incorporating these ideas in it through the skits and um like these certain um what can i say i don't even know man just but yeah as far as like double vision itself um i'm not gonna lie down the line years from now like we have the long-term goals we're trying to like figure out the short-term logistics for it mm-hmm. but long-term man we definitely want like a studio space we really want like a um uh, like a cafe like a whole cafe in the oh, city wow, yeah. where like a listening space where it's open late open for creators to come because i feel like i mean there's coffee shops and places around here open but you don't really see people like us in there working in there all the time so we really True. want to foster an environment for that yeah. a collaborative environment for that for those ideas to really flourish for yeah that's an incredible um, idea yeah so really um doing that on a digital medium first is really the first goal for that yeah yeah just create an immersive experience right. and also let it be visual in, audio yeah, yeah just in super inclusive and like any sure. idea is welcome that's right. fucking awesome right. dude I've, i i expect it from guys like y'all because y'all y'all have been like kind of the duo that mm-hmm. i've always known about and seen and been like dude they're making incredible stuff and it seemed like you were on a little bit of a hiatus with music for a while because mm-hmm. you took priority with uh ways of seeing us mm-hmm. um what what is creating um the visual aspect been like with like your photography that's always mm-hmm. been something you've been doing throughout college but recently the videography thing and kind of having these creative projects that you're showcasing mm-hmm. um 
what what's been the process with that and like where do you want to go with it um so i kind of i guess in a sense to the public i did take a kind of a hiatus from like producing but i've always been still like been producing working. behind the scenes but yeah as far as like making projects for myself i wanted to find my way with that because i wasn't sure if i wanted to be the producer that's appealing more to the artists or a producer that's putting out my projects under my own name for real. Right. And I recently, just last year, decided on a producer name myself. I, for a while, I didn't even want to go under my government name mm -hmm. as a producer name. So yeah, Seventh Or is definitely something I'm sticking with now. Yeah. Um, we'll but get as far, into Seventh Or yeah, for yeah. sure. But as far as um, ways of seeing, um, it's just the photography and videography is a, a it's a lower barrier to entry for other people to like get into for real i have more like i don't know just more people that um really want to experience that with me like shoot with me on that so um there's a lot of ideas that i wanted to just explore with that just for a long time i wanted to do that visually but yeah um now that we live in this age where everybody's trying to do a shoot or something all the time like it was easier for me to do that but um definitely blending the two has always been the goal for sure yeah, right yeah. and i think you've done a really really great job of that because mm. you know seeing your music videos it's kind of funny because they feel because i've obviously been here for the entire journey right, for sure so i have a very distinct uh memory of your soundcloud work where mm. y'all were you know, taking covers <laughs> and like taking yeah. um, like screenshots of like yeah. girls that y'all fucked with yeah, and like yeah, making yeah. whole projects entitled nah, after facts, them. Facts, facts. So cool. And like y'all would use like cool like hyphen sing, uh, symbols in mm -hmm. your in your titles and all that. So like mm -hmm. it, it was kind of funny taking that visual from like the SoundCloud era and seeing your music videos and it's kind of still feeling the same because mm -hmm. I was like. This feels like right. just a visual of what I was seeing in picture right. form on the SoundCloud. So right. in more ways than not, I think I'm just giving you a compliment for <laughs> staying consistent with yeah, yeah. the vision. Because mm -hmm. I don't know, man. It's just like it's it's something that I appreciate because as a, you know, a visual enthusiast to the nth degree, mm -hmm. it's just it's just like seeing someone accomplish the look. Mm -hmm. that they're striving to get even though it's probably not even like the in end game Definitely. there mm -hmm. but you know achieving something and it, it continuously looking like oh they're improving oh right, right, right. they're achieving something here it's sure. it's impressive man. i appreciate it I have, yeah. of course so back to the seventh aura mm -hmm. thing which that was also like one of my favorite name switches that i saw yeah. from you because you've you've changed your producer tag a couple mm -hmm. times but it's always stayed in the realm of austin right and you changing it up but still keeping it there with the au and there mm -hmm. it was just incredible with that project last year or was that earlier this year it was on my birthday this yeah year, early birthday this, year, this yeah. year um what went into the creative mind behind that i um, incredible incredible instrumentals by the way thank you thank you because if there's something that you're going to do, it's going to be creating an immersive audio experience. Right, exactly. And also down to the visuals with the cover. It mm -hmm. was just incredible stuff. Mm -hmm. So when did you start creating that and um, formulating when it was going to come out? Really, um, for that project specifically, it mm -hmm. didn't even take that long. I had I had bigger goals for bigger projects in mind, um, like bigger length projects. Sure. But around April... I just had a sense of urgency about wanting to get music out, especially by my birthday. So okay. like two to three weeks before my birthday is really when I started trying to get that stuff together and really focusing in on what I wanted. Um, and then I came to the conclusion that I wanted my um, grandma to, uh, I wanted to have a conversation with my grandma, basically like this, just asking her questions um, on what she thinks about certain things in life. And then incorporating that and weaving that throughout the whole project for real mm. and um i wanted to like i said i had a sense of urgency about wanting to get some music out because it's been a, a long time since i had put out some music for real and it, it would have been the first time that i put out something under seventh or mm. so i definitely wanted to get something out by yeah. my birthday so um yeah i was just glad i was able to do that yeah, yeah. and it was incredible Thank um you. where where's the future headed in 
under that moniker Mm -hmm. like where do you see um really like you said man more immersive experiences like right now i'm working on um this project like you were saying it's funny that you mentioned like um like the projects i was making around girls i used to like back then yeah really now i'm working on a project where the concept is where it's a a figurative idea of this girl that i i like but not really she doesn't necessarily exist she might have qualities in a lot of people that i know but it's this figurative girl that i'm appealing to and making this project dedicated towards so um yeah um right now the name is the girl in the least dress okay so um it's not really focused on the the clothing brand itself but more so the persona around it the aesthetic around it yeah and um yeah really just touching on my my ideas of love right now and where i see it and um yeah putting that on display for her you yeah. really so um i really want to do a, a visuals around that I, I i wanted to do a short film accompanying that um and yeah just touching on not necessarily even like softer um the soft image of love that we all see i wanted to get in the ugly parts of it the mm. hard parts of it i wanted to touch on all these aspects of it through the project so yeah that's really what i'm getting into right now that's incredible but yeah even aside from that just more immersive experiences collaborating with more people but yeah yeah just by hearing that project um as a brainchild i'm so excited to see that Mm -hmm. by the way um that just kind of like gives me the idea of something i've always known is that like you're super super eclectic with what you take in so that what you put out is just as incredible what as what you've you know taken mm-hmm. inspiration from what what's inspiring you visually or what has inspired you visually um visually um i just like there's definitely been a lot of music videos over the years i like but just randomly off top one movie that i like was malcolm and marie i don't know if you've seen it yeah, on netflix yeah no yeah this it's not really trip. i know people who didn't really like it because it wasn't really a lot going on right but it being shot on film like kodak film the feel of it it being in black and white, black and white was it sick. being since it's not go, a lot going on in the plot the focus on the characters themselves the focus on their relationship the focus on I mean, the aspects of love really yeah. um, is really something that I resonated with for real, and that's yeah. something I really want to display in my future works. Yeah, yeah. I still have to get around the finishing that, but in mm-hmm. a similar realm because it was made by um, Sam Levison, who made Malcolm mm-hmm. Marie. Uh, the Euphoria one shots mm-hmm. that they did before the second season came out, it was like pandemic era, so like mm-hmm. they only had so many things that they could shoot right. within the rules of mm-hmm. COVID and malcolm marie was one of those things and these two euphoria shots and Mm -hmm. my mom and sister for the life of them hated it but like (laughs) i was like this is fucking incredible like i i love i love euphoria as it is with the i call it distractions of lighting techniques or crazy gimbals turns you know angles and whatever other film tricks you can use to like make an immersive Mm -hmm. crazy experience watching it visually Mm -hmm. but the very subtle and very just calm we're dealing with this subject and this subject and it's a medium close-up and it's really driven by dialogue that's that's when I right. start because you out. have to be a good writer for that. You can't rely 100%. on like the gimmicks and everything. You have to like be good at your craft. You have yeah. to be fired. Yeah. Like and goes down to the acting too, where right. like exactly. in those instances that has to feel real. That has yes. to feel like a conversation between a husband and a wife yeah, right. who have you know all of the issues in the world right. that you could think of. And right. then in Euphoria's case, that has to be a recovering drug addict mm-hmm. and a fucking AA meeting guy <laughs> yeah, just yeah. talking down to a kid being like, shut yeah. the fuck up, you don't know anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And both of those felt so real. Do you do you see yourself making a film in some capacity? Uh, yeah, Short definitely. or feature in the future? Um, 
One day, yes. As far as like a feature film, like a full length film, yeah. one day, yes. But definitely short films are something I want to like get into within the uh, near future. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Okay. Yeah. I mean, me too. So maybe definitely. We'll nah, to... I'm looking forward to that from you. Definitely. Oh, yeah, thanks, man. dude. I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, man. I. It's just like. I've always known you as the music guy. So mm-hmm. like once I started seeing you presenting yourself on a video basis, I, like I got excited cause right, I was right. like, this is the guy yeah, yeah, yeah. with that mind. And, um, I'm just really, really fucking proud of you, dude. Thank cause you, like, man. I appreciate it. I don't, I don't will bro niggas. So like, <laughs> yeah. seeing someone, nah, like that, I'll take that from you, man. Cause uh, definitely like I wouldn't have been, I wouldn't have the music taste I have. I wouldn't be producing like I would if it wasn't for guys like you, Alex and Jordan, back in the day, just fucking around like you were saying. Type like, shit. Yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah. Man. I was the little bro in that situation. I was the youngest <laughs> nigga in the rooms all the time. So, well, yeah. I say it in that case, yeah, but like right now, you're yeah, not yeah, little bro. For sure, you for sure. are becoming something and yeah. already in my eyes already became a very, very instrumental and just like dedicated young dude just Mm -hmm. doing exactly what he wants to and i'm really really proud of you it's insane so to wrap up everything i've kind of already asked you what's next and Mm -hmm. i really know what's next is going to be great because you're great Mm -hmm. um what where do you where do you feel like everything is going for you as far as um just being a human being in life like i i think you know the the title of like music producer filmmaker all that jazz is fun but like as a human being what what do you want to do with your life that Hmm. pushes you to wake up every day and create what you create um it's a deep ass question but i'm not definitely um first and foremost i'm not gonna lie like anytime like i really feel a deep connection with one of my creations i always think about god and his relation to us mm-hmm. as his creation so through that is something that i'm definitely want to search more of that feeling and that i don't know that resonance between creator and creation and that love between the two so that's a just a feeling i want to infuse into my work and get to know more of through god um but even aside from that just um expressing these ideas to people in the most cinematic and clear concise way um like there's you can there's so much going on in the world it's so many distractions it's so oversaturated but being saying things saying something with a in a certain way that captures people is definitely something i want to do in my everyday life in anything i do yeah so um establishing these connections with people a deeper relationship with people is definitely something i look forward to yeah absolutely dude and i think you're well on your way to doing that Mm -hmm. and i'm excited for whatever's coming next you know what i mean